Hi, I'm Kathy Giordano, and today Pam Malley and I will be talking about social skills and how they impact children with Tourette syndrome. I'm Pam Malley, and I'm a speech pathologist. I also have a child with Tourette syndrome. What are social skills, and how do they relate to children with Tourette? Social skills are all of the skills that are necessary in order to form meaningful relationships, to communicate your information in different contexts, whether it's in a school setting, at home, in informal settings on your baseball team, and all the different aspects of life. Mm -hmm. And we have rules of conversation about what's appropriate in different places. You know, you hear teachers say, use your inside voice. Well, students with Tourette oftentimes can have difficulties with some or many of the different um, skills that are involved in maintaining social relationships and, and in communicating social information. With Tourette, because Tourette is such a large diagnosis that can encompass lots of different areas from language difficulties to learning difficulties to disinhibition and anxiety, all of those can have an impact on your social skills. Does having problems with social skills impact uh, children's friendships as well as does it impact relationships with teachers? Yes, it definitely can. Uh, a lot of times, especially with children, they don't understand why a student might get too close or might not ever look at them when they speak with them or why they don't follow their conversation as well because maybe a student has an auditory processing problem with their Tourette syndrome so they are not even following the conversation as well mm -hmm. and then they can't participate as well or if they have disinhibition, then they might be grabbing their things or be impulsive around the um, other children and then it makes it difficult to form relationships because the other children tend to want to pull away. The same thing happens in the classroom with teachers. Teachers think that perhaps they're misbehaving because they're grabbing papers or they're throwing things when really it's just a symptom of the Tourette. Oftentimes, if you have a lifelong friend, like maybe a child that you've been playing with for years and years and years, then you won't see as many of those difficulties, either because the other child is already aware of it and compensates, or it can be because the child with Tourette is so comfortable that their anxiety isn't acting up or their disinhibition isn't, their symptoms are not escalated because they're in a very comfortable and supportive environment. And that's the key to learn is when your child is in those environments and doing well, figure out why and how can we make that happen somewhere else. Sometimes children with Tourette are misdiagnosed as having autism. How can parents make sure that they're getting the right diagnosis? Children with autism typically develop language skills at a later point in time. So they'll have late language development. In students with, in children with Tourette syndrome, oftentimes they have fairly typical language development, but then as they get older, the, the demands of conversation and of social skills and maintaining social relationships increase, mm -hmm. and because they have social communication problems, they're not able to keep up with those demands, so they start to move farther and farther apart from their peers. You really have to look at the DSM and work with your healthcare professional to figure out where your child fits best. One key factor to look at there is when did their language develop and how did it develop? So I think this is really important information um, because parents need to keep doctors and schools on track and get the right diagnosis. Absolutely, because that affects treatment. Okay, so there are strategies. Absolutely, there are lots of strategies. And there's not a one size fits all. And that's another reason why I think it's important to distinguish between whether your child truly meets the autism diagnosis or social communication disorder. What you have to be careful of is making sure that you've identified what's really at the root of this. Does the child have primarily anxiety? If so, then you want to work with the counselor or a psychologist on learning strategies to reduce that and then practicing those strategies not just in the setting, in the session with the professional, but outside and generalizing that to other environments because that's where it gets difficult. Mm -hmm. A lot of times students with Tourette have a lot of insight to what's going on. They know and that's another difference between them and students with autism. Students with autism learn 
about their differences and they develop that understanding but they don't have it from the get-go mm -hmm. and so these students struggle with that because they know I'm not I'm not supposed to be moving like that or I'm not supposed to be saying that but they don't know why they're doing it and they don't know how to make it stop and then that creates more anxiety and can actually make it escalate and make it worse and so when we do social skills interventions, we need to find out what's the root of really what's going on with the students so we can address that and then teach them the skills paired with those strategies for the root diagnosis of anxiety or learning problems or whatever so that um, you can address the problem more efficiently. Thank you for joining us and if you would like more information on this important topic, please go to Tourette.org.